Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with new and improved chicken parmesan. That's right, anybody can improve a recipe that actually needs it. But I'm not into that. I prefer to rework recipes that everyone thinks are already perfect. Like, for example, chicken parm. And while I'm not going to lie and say I don't like the classic version, because I really do, but what I don't love about it is the way it's usually topped with a thick layer of rubbery bland mozzarella cheese. So I don't want to spoil the surprise, because we're going to get to it. But believe it or not, this chicken parm is going to be 100% mozzarella free. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and prep our chicken. And what we're going to want to do is pound our boneless, skinless chicken breast between a couple layers of plastic. And my strategy here is to get the whole chicken breast the same thickness as this thinner, pointier end. So all that means is we're going to do most of our pounding on this thicker part. And this is not a game of strength. Okay, so don't be too aggressive with this. We just want to use enough force to gently flatten that out. So we'll keep pounding until we think it's reached a fairly uniform level of thickness, and then we'll stop, because that's all we need to do. So that's looking pretty good right there. And I went ahead and did that to two breasts. And in case you're curious, what happens if you are too aggressive and completely smash the end of one of the breasts? Don't worry, it's not a problem, because once this stuff is breaded, it always looks perfect. So don't obliterate those edges on purpose, but if you do, it's not a big deal. And then once those breasts are prepped, we'll go ahead and season those up with kosher salt and some freshly ground black pepper. And then of course, we're also gonna to wanna to bread these, but not using the classic three station method. What we're gonna do instead after these have been seasoned is sprinkle over and press in the flour right on this plate instead of dipping this in a separate dish of flour. We'll just go ahead and sprinkle it over and press it in. And then we'll turn those over and do the exact same thing to the other side salt, pepper, and flour, and then we'll press that in to make sure both sides are well coated. And one of the advantages here is we're only using the flour we need, or if you use a separate dish of flour, you're going to have to throw away all the extra. And this way, we're basically just using what we need. And then because that works so well for the flour, we're basically going to do the same thing with our egg wash. So what we'll do is we'll brush off some of that excess flour, and instead of cracking two or three eggs in another dish, we will simply beat one single egg and pour that right over the chicken on the plate. And then using our fingers and or pastry brush, we will make sure all that flour gets coated with our egg wash. And I realize it looks a little weird and kind of messy, but bottom line, we're only dirty in one plate. Not to mention probably using less flour and egg. And by the way, in hindsight, we probably should have brushed off the excess flour off the plate also. But nonetheless, this still worked out very well. And then what's gonna happen after those breasts have been floured and egg washed? We will transfer those into some plain dry breadcrumbs and yes, I can see that little spot of flour that doesn't have any egg. Let me fix that. There we go. And I'll go around pressing a little bit up on the edges before sprinkling some crumbs over the top. And then I think you know the rest. We will make sure both sides are covered completely with those crumbs and that they've been pressed in firmly. And if you are going to fry these immediately, you can go ahead and leave them on that plate. But if, like me, you're doing these a little bit ahead of time, I do like to transfer those onto a clean plate. I guess to prevent clumping, but mostly because it looks better. And at this point, we can go ahead and refrigerate that until we're ready to fry. And you know what? I think I'm ready. So what we're going to do is fry these in about a half inch of olive oil, set over medium high heat, and please make sure your oil is hot enough before you put the chicken in. If you start to put yours in and the tip hits that oil and it doesn't start bubbling like this, don't go any further. Let it get hotter. But assuming your oil was properly heated, we're going to go ahead and cook these for about two to three minutes per side, or until crispy and golden brown. And be careful when you flip them over. See, if you just grab the edge like I did, you could rip off some of that coating. You see that? But anyway, like I said, we're going to cook those about two to three minutes per side, at which point we will remove those to a foil line baking sheet and proceed with the new and improved part of the program. See, normally at this point, this would be topped with our tomato sauce and then covered with very bland, rubbery mozzarella cheese, but we're not going to do that. We're going to make our own custom cheese mixture featuring creamy and delicious ricotta cheese, fortified with the tangy sharpness of cheddar. And then besides our two cheeses, we'll also give this a little pinch of freshly ground black pepper, as well as some cayenne. We all saw that coming. And then we'll finish up with a little pinch of salt and just a tiny drizzle of olive oil. And then we'll take a spoon and mix that up. And what I was attempting to do here is simulate that beautiful creamy goodness of a fresh mozzarella, which is generally creamier, tangier, and significantly less rubbery. But it can be pricey and sometimes hard to find. So many people end up using that thing from the supermarket that looks and feels like a baseball. So that's really the stuff we're trying to avoid with this technique. If you're already doing your chicken and veal parm with beautiful fresh mozzarella, you could just keep doing that. That's delicious. 
But anyway, we're going to go ahead and give that a mix. And once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and top our chicken. So I divided that mixture up between the two breasts and kind of spread it out a little. I didn't want to go all the way to the edges, but I also didn't know how this was going to melt. So I didn't just want to pile it all up in the middle. But I think next time I won't spread it out quite as much. So we leave a little more of those crispy crumbs exposed. And if you're wondering why I didn't put sauce down first and then the cheese, I think this comes out better if you just top with the cheese and not the sauce. I mean, we're going to have plenty of sauce on the plate. So I really don't think we need that extra layer of sogginess under the cheese. And then once our cheese mixture has been applied, we're going to finish this off with a nice dusting of real Parmigiano Reggiano. I assume everyone has read the recent articles online about the non-real Parmesan containing sawdust, as I've warned you about in the past. So unless you're part termite, use the real stuff. And then for a final touch, we'll give those tops a little drizzle of olive oil. And once that's set, we'll go ahead and place these in the center of a very hot 500 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes, or until that cheese is melted and the chicken is cooked through. And hopefully when it comes out, it looks something like this. And then some good news, we don't really have to let this rest. By the time we plate this up, it will be fine. And speaking of plating this up, I made a huge rookie mistake. You never want to cover the whole plate with the sauce because all those beautiful crispy crumbs on the bottom of your chicken are going to get soggy. So instead of a pool, you really want to do a ring, which I've simulated graphically with this white circle because I didn't notice my mistake until the video was done. In related news, I did learn how to make a white circle in Premiere. But anyway, I went ahead and transferred that chicken onto my sauce and finished it off with a little bit of freshly chopped Italian parsley. And my new and hopefully improved chicken parm was done. And notwithstanding my pool of sauce issue, I really thought this came out incredibly well. All right, all the classic components of chicken parm are here. The crispy cutlet, the delicious sauce, but instead of a thick, bland, rubbery topping of mozzarella, we have our customized cheese blend, which gives us all that beautiful, creamy goodness of mozzarella, but is way more flavorful and the texture far superior. I mean, when people try this and see how good it is, they might just start replacing mozzarella on pizza too. Who knows? I mean, did we just inadvertently destroy the mozzarella industry? I hope not. But if so, they had a good run. But anyway, that's it. If you are a lover of the chicken and or veal parm, then I really hope you give this alternative version a try very soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.